Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce myself to you as the only senator who has been diagnosed with lung cancer as of last week. I have Just a few weeks ago, Philippine Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago announced that she has a stage 4 lung cancer. Clarify that she and her husband are non smokers. Secondhand smoking was then immediately blamed for Santiago's cancer. Ang pinaka most common pa rin ay exposure sa secondhand smoke. So while it may be true na walang exposure si Senadora sa cancer, sa smoking, no, the sa galing sa kanyang asawa, maaaring doon sa workplace na kung saan siya nagtatrabaho, naruroon yung exposure. But other doctors blame it to air pollution. Air pollution has never been a new issue in this country. Several so decades ago, scientists have been aware that the continued pollution would bring problems that only to the pollution of the environment, but also to the environment. To address and prevent this, several environmental laws were passed and international conventions signed. Yet, it seems that air pollution is getting worse. Then, this documentary will look into the recent quality of What are its implications? What happened to the environmental laws of international conventions? And some possible solutions. I am Jenny and Cameron Gideon, and this is The Lost. found in the Earth's atmosphere is a mixture of gases such as oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon. It is a precious and essential resource that keeps living things such as plants, animals, and humans alive. It is what the living things breathe. And so the health and continued existence of living organisms largely depends upon the quality of the air. However, as the humankind progresses, the Earth's air quality regresses. In the advent of technology, human beings keep on emitting pollutants into the atmosphere, the amount of which keeps on growing year by year. From 390 parts per million four years ago, the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide, one of the major drivers of global warming and climate change, has alarmingly reached 400 parts per million last year. This is a significant milestone. It reminds us of the fact that CO2 in the atmosphere currently is higher than it has been in the last at least two million years. What is also significant is that the rate of increase is rapid. In the Philippines, few of the common sources of air pollution recorded are the emissions from smoking and from vehicles. In 2009, the DNR reported that 63% of the national emission came from vehicle emissions. In 2010, it reported that vehicle emissions now formed 80% of the national emission. Republic Act 3931 prohibits emission of any matter into the atmospheric air that would cause pollution thereof. In the context of vehicle emission, smoke belching falls under this prohibition. Meanwhile, the Philippine Clean Air Act of 1999 mandates the Department of Transportation and Communications to implement the emission standards for motor vehicles and enforce compliance with such standards. The Clean Air Act also prohibits smoking in public places, including public vehicles, and such prohibition shall be enforced by the LGUs. Another major sources of air pollution are the industries especially the coal-fired power plants that generate electricity by burning fossil fuels. They are commonly blamed by environmental activists to have largely emitted carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Section 9 of RA 3931 clearly prohibits, without first securing a permit from the city or district engineer, the construction or installation of industrial or commercial establishments, the operation of which would cause an increase in the discharge of wastes directly into the atmospheric air of the Philippines. This leads us to the one million question, why are these plants, which lack facilities to prevent discharge of air pollutants, permitted to operate?
Philippines and the world have numerous remarkable laws and conventions that aim to protect the environment. But apparently, there are gaps between these laws and their implementation. The United Nations, of which Philippines is a member, has crafted several conventions such as the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change and the Kyoto Protocol for countries around the world to collectively work in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. However, for the past 20 years, it can be seen that industrial countries themselves are not committed in cutting their carbon emissions. Even the developing countries such as China and the Philippines are using the Kyoto Protocol as an excuse to continue spewing greenhouse gases in the course of the so-called development. Clearly, government leaders around the world lack the political will to implement these environmental laws and conventions. Ang planta sa Redondo, Sambales. Pina-TRO dahil mas maganda raw ang renewable. Sinabi rin po ba nilang mas mahal itong ipatayo at mas mahal din ang magiging preso ng enerhiya. Sinabi po kaya nilang hindi nito kaya tugunan ang base load o ang kapasidad na kailangan laging nariyan para hindi mag-brown out. Magtatayo ka ng wind, paano kung walang hangin? Kung solar, paano kung makulimlim? Environmentalists also lament that even the agency that is mandated to protect the environment is supporting and giving licenses to operations that apparently degrade the environment. Meanwhile, DOTC admits that corruption and bureaucracy also hinders the effective implementation of the policies such as the Clean Air Act. Um, alam natin na minsan dyan marami pa rin na nagpapalusot, nagpaparehistro ng no appearance, magabot ka na lang at uh, fast track yung lane mo at uh, walang kaparehistro. In the past and until at present, air pollution has been seen to have various effects not just on the health of the human beings but also on the configuration of the planet. Two of these effects are global warming. And climate change. If we continue to burn fossil fuels um, at accelerating rates, if we continue with business as usual, uh, we will cross the 450 parts per million limit in a matter of maybe a couple decades. We believe that with that amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, we commit to what can truly be uh, described as dangerous and irreversible changes in our climate. At the same time, climate change impacts the air quality and the atmosphere. The close connection between climate and the air quality is also reflected in the impacts of climate change on air pollution levels. Ozone and particle pollution are strongly influenced by shifts in the weather. Based on projected future climate scenarios and the absence of additional emissions reductions, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change projected declining air quality in cities into the future as a result of climate change. Further, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency concluded in 2009 that greenhouse gas emissions may reasonably be anticipated both to endanger public health and to endanger public welfare. And so, the danger. November 5, patuloy na nag-iipon ng lakas ang bagyo habang dumadaan sa Pacific Ocean. Nang sumunod na araw, ibinalitang ang Super Typhoon Yolanda ang itinuturing na pinakamalakas na bagyo sa buong mundo ngayong taon. Hindi lang malakas na hangin ang dala ng Super Typhoon. Dahil sa video ito, nakuha naman ang team ni Micaela Papa dun din sa Palo Leyte. ang tinutukoy na storm surge o tubig dagat na pumasok na sa lupa dala ng hangin ng bagyo. I speak for my delegation but I I speak speak for the countless people who will no longer be able to speak for themselves after perishing from the storm, I speak also for those who have been orphaned by the storm. We can take drastic action now to ensure that we prevent a future where super typhoons become a way of life. Can we ever attain the ultimate objective of the convention, which is to prevent dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system? 
cannot solve climate change when we seek to spew more emissions. By failing to meet the objective of the Convention, we, we may have ratified our own doom. We have to confront the issue of loss and damage. Loss and damage is a reality today across the world. Pagpapatuloy ko ang 3R. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Apparently, numerous solutions to air pollution are at hand. What is needed is to put them into wheels together. In Cebu, biking enthusiasts are advocating biking as an alternative means of transportation and at the same time for the establishment of bike lanes to lessen pollution and traffic. I am in favor of bike lanes because it is part of smart urban design. You cannot solve the traffic by having more roads for more cars. But instead, the solution is to have alternative mobility options. Among them, walking, mass transit, and most importantly, biking. One may also stop or never attempt to smoke at all and to refrain from burning garbage, also known as incineration. And to lessen garbage, the traditional three R's are still the best ways to go. Reduce, reuse, recycle. We also need to stop the unnecessary cutting of trees. Instead, we need to plant more, as trees absorb carbon dioxide in the air. Concurrently, we need to begin divesting from fossil fuels and start investing in several sources of renewable energy such as solar, wind, wave, and tidal energy. Most importantly, we need the strict implementation of and obedience to the laws and adherence to international environmental conventions. But to achieve all of these, the people, especially the youth, must be engaged. And so it is everyone's duty to raise the awareness of the people, organize every community, and mobilize the nation. Thank you. 